Hello and welcome to our monthly webinar series. My name is Tom Carpenter. I'm the CTO here at CWNP, and I'd like to welcome you to this guest webinar. We have a guest speaker today, and she's going to be talking about metrics and measurements in Wi-Fi infrastructures. So you're going to be getting some good information about what kinds of things you want to look for to evaluate your network and make sure it's working the way it's supposed to be working. And that's really what it's all about when we talk about these metrics. They come into play at the beginning when we're first of all planning the network to decide what we need. And then at the design phase when we're making sure we're getting what we need. And then of course in the support phase when we're making sure we're getting ongoing results that are required out of our wireless LAN. So some really good information coming today, but I want to start off with a little bit of news about CWNP. So first of all, we did launch a new service this year called the Wireless LAN News Desk. This is a weekly news live cast on YouTube every Friday at 1.30 Eastern Standard Time. And we archive the video by the end of business day on Friday, so it's there for you to view if you can't catch it live. And there's also a podcast that usually will be available by the following Monday as well. And currently that can be accessed through our blog at cwnp.com, but we're in the process of developing an RSS feed for you. So if you use a podcast subscription application or something, you can have those come down to you automatically. Of course, you can always view the live cast at youtube.com slash user slash cwnp tv slash live. And if you go there, subscribe to the channel, click the bell to get notifications, then you'll be notified via email whenever we're about to go live. And so you'll always know about that. Additionally, there's a new e-learning platform launching in the coming weeks. So over time, all of our existing e-learning products will be moved into this platform. And the new products for CWS and CWT are going to be in there from the start. It's based on industry standard e-learning platforms and provides uh, exceptional progress tracking and learning analysis. So you can make sure you're getting through all the material you need to get through. All of our practice exams will eventually be integrated into this system as well. And that will enhance our capabilities. So people have had some requests for different features and capabilities in the practice exams. And we're going to make sure that we get those uh, features for you. So all of that's coming here in the next few weeks. So watch out for that in your email from CWNP News email newsletters. Now let's talk about what we're going to be talking about today. So here in this webinar, uh, Mano Lassar is going to be talking about Wi-Fi metrics and measurements. And I'm going to let her take over and just begin to tell you what she's going to talk about today, tell you a little bit about herself and get right into the topic. So May, welcome and let's hear. Thank you, uh, Tom. So uh, today, uh, the topic that I want to address with you is, you know, I just want to go through uh, metrics that matter for everyday Wi-Fi. We all have our share of the Wi-Fi pie, if I may. And um, Mine is, is more about administration, although I tend to wear uh, all sorts of hats. And so I'm trying to make this presentation as much a 360 view of the measurements and metrics that matter to me as an admin and how, it can, uh, how, how can they matter to you. I want to talk about um, so metrics that matter for everyday Wi-Fi, measurements that can speak to you, uh, what this data can tell you about your network's health, how it's doing security-wise, you know, and, and how, how this, the findings that you find, that's redundant, how your findings can help you uh, troubleshoot potential issues, and so on and so forth. So first, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Manon Lessard. Uh, most of uh, you guys, people that know me in the Wi-Fi world, call me May. It's just uh, easier to say. <laughs> I have to tell you, Tom does call me May instead. Uh, so I'm a network admin and a Wi-Fi specialist for a large university uh, in beautiful Quebec, Canada. So I've been doing this uh, wireless thing and networking thing for 15 years. So I hold a couple of certs. This presentation comes at the end of the CWNP um, series. I am a CWNE candidate, and this is this presentation is in part one of my publication requirements and so uh, going back to my current role I, I do it all so i can do site surveys one day analyzing the performance of our campus wireless LAN. we have 1800 ap's at peak we see about 24 thousand clients and then you know we we do install and configure everything in home 
and we have to manage the cablers and the cabling for that and all that. So a lot of stuff involved. I see a variety of, of tasks every day. And so, as I said, this presentation is a little bit of a 360 view of my day-to-day -day metrics that matter. I'd like to start this presentation by establishing a baseline of a few things that are common for for us wireless people, uh, we use it in our day to day. So, you know, uh, basically our units, we're going to use a lot of units of power, mainly watts. Since it's Wi Fi, it's a little bit less powerful. So, it's going to be milliwatts. We're going to talk in milliwatts because they're in that absolute measurement uh, instead of Bell. Bell is some kind of unit that got its name uh, from its past in Bell Lab uh, while well, it was uh, used uh, in the Telegram telegraph and telephone days. And so granted this is Wi-Fi, we're still using less power, so we're using dBs. And then since it's a comparative unit and we like to get absolute values uh, to get a definite baseline, we're gonna use the dBm that is decibel um, relative to milliwatt. So those are two units that are super important in your daily activities. There are formulas to go from back back and forth from uh, dB to milliwatt. They're really e easy to, to, to handle, and you can see them in the CWNA book. I'm not going to go over that. I guess, uh, I guess our audience knows enough about Wi-Fi to, uh, to be able to refer to the correct book for that purpose. So let's dive uh, right ahead in measurement. Very, very common thing we hear uh, when discussing Wi-Fi, RSSI. So. <laughs> The problem with RSSI is, you know, it's sort of a stick of a finger in the air. How many bars do you have? It's kind of a reading of power from a client's perspective. Some, uh, uh, some devices nowadays uh, might refer to it in dB, but generally it's a ratio that can range from 0 to 250 or 0 to 100, depending on the secret recipe that's used by, uh, by, the, by the, the manufacturer. The recipe itself is uh, proprietary, so it's like a secret sauce. It's not in the 802.11 standard per se. Among the all the measurements that we have in Wi-Fi, this is the most common, but it's the one I like the least because it doesn't speak of the quality of the link, really. Uh, the rate you're using, the SNR, is more of the real stuff. Also, signal strength, you know. So it's indicative as it's, it's as indicative as describing the weather uh, forecast. So, you know, I'm, as I said, I'm from Canada. If I was using the weather forecast analogy, I'd tell you that the sunniest days we have right now, when you're standing in your living room and look at the window, they look awesome. But when you walk out the door, it's minus 30 C, so minus 23 in armpit, armpit temps or Fahrenheit, you're left hoping for more precision. So. RSSI is pretty much like that, you know. It's it's not very very impre imprecise. Uh, we tend to use nowadays one thing that's uh, more um, precise than RSSI. It's called RCPI. It's called uh, so uh, it stands for uh, Received Channel Power Indicator. I haven't used uh, I haven't used it all that much, but it is defined in the 802.11 standard. Tom, I hear that you're using it more often than I do. Would you like to have a few words about RCPI? I would like to use it a lot more often than we can because it's, um, it's a measurement that is taken over time as a, a symbol is received. And so rather than just being some measurement that looks at a single moment in time, it looks at an average over a period of time, which gives you a better picture really of what's going on in the channel. And it's very accurate, unlike RSSI, like you said, there's this range and who knows where the vendor falls in it. It is something that a lot of chipsets do produce. Uh, it's just up to the drivers to give us the information. And sadly, not a lot of them are doing that yet. Hopefully we'll see more of it in the future, but it is defined in the standard. And that's why I'm hoping to see more of this actually as a power indicator We'll see what happens though, you know, 802.11ax is going to change a lot of things. So some things we hoped would catch on, we may not even want to catch on in the future. But for now, it is a defined metric that is tracked by many chipsets uh, and just not necessarily reported to us through the device drivers. Yeah, hopefully we finally get um, a number that speaks both to the client and, and to the support uh, personnel. 
uh, that way, you know, we can all speak the same language. Yep. That would be awesome. Next, we have signal to noise ratio and signal to interference plus noise ratio. So basically, we tend to use it inter interchangeably. There's a slight difference uh, in the two. So basically, they're all about how well we can hear the signal versus the ambient noise. So it's like when you're in, at this concert and you're talking to your friend, how well can you hear it through, hear him or her uh, through the noise? Uh, that's why it matters, especially in, 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 uh, in uh, increasing speeds and, and data rates, you know, with, with higher uh, MCSs, we're really uh, fussy about the signal to noise ratio because it's getting, the modulation makes it so that we need precise, we need to hear precisely what is being said because there are so many variants, you know. It's like instead of being uh, at a concert with a friend, you're at a concert with seven of your friends and all of a sudden you have to know at all times what they are and be able to say, to hear uh, exactly what they're, they're saying, you know, you, you really need that precision. Uh, anything you'd like to add about SNI and SNR and SINR, Tom? Actually, I, I love the analogy you're using because, you know, you can think of SNR is kind of like the difference between the, the concert that's going on and your one friend that you're talking to. So that one friend is the signal you want to receive and the concert is the noise. But, but then SINR is kind of like, okay, you've also got that other friend who's annoying and always wants to interfere when you're trying to talk to someone. And they have to be accounted for too. Unlike the concert, they're not there all the time. But every now and then you're trying to have a conversation with your friend on one side and they're kind of interjecting and wanting to say something to you and they're interrupting some percentage of the time. And SINR is kind of like that. So it, it takes it further than SNR to say, yeah, we've got that baseline that's always there, but there are also these interferers. So I, I love the analogy you gave. I think it helps people understand it well. I think I just came up with a greater analogy. SNR is like you're having coffee with your friend at home and SINR is you're having coffee with your friend at home and your kids are there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> so for sure, there's going to be someone that comes up and says, Mama, can I go play video games? Can I have juice? Can I have this? Can I have that? And you still have to listen to your friend who's talking about her recent heartbreak or something. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, all these measurements, uh, what do they look like? Um, I have this uh, this amazing tool. Uh, I'm not going to name the vendor, but I'm going to tell you it's the Wi-Fi engineer's most beloved to test tool. Uh, you, I guess you'll figure out what it is. And in uh, among the things that it measures, it, it can measure the RSSI and the signal strength and BB, and you can see the the, the SNR. And now this is a snapshot of what I can see when I'm standing in my kitchen, and these are all my neighbors. And the Belafonte is obviously my um, my own uh, SSID, and so you can see that SNR is 48, which is super great. Uh, the signal strength is minus 41 dB. It's it's absolutely awesome. But basically, I'm sitting on my AP at that at that point. So the the readings from my neighbor are still coming in strong, uh, although I'm I'm standing in in my own house. So that can give you a little bit of an idea of how, how bad the RF can be, especially in 2.4. If you want to go into more precise um, measurements and a more precise view, you can see the noise level is a little bit high at minus 89 dBm. Uh, signal level 41, uh, SNR 48. So, you know, all in all, it's a little noisy, but it's, it's a great condition. So that's the kind of stuff that I'm going to check if I go see um, a problem in the field uh, somewhere on campus. I go to the building, I see those specs. That problem is not, probably more, more than likely not the Wi-Fi. Uh, more things that we like to measure, the upload, download amount of data that can be effectively exchanged. Um, there are awesome test tools out there. There's uh, iPerf, Wi-Fi Perf. Uh, some guys have used uh, all droids and Raspberry Pis with a wireless LAN uh, adapter. Uh, you can use site survey software to get this uh, throughput data. There are all sorts of solutions. 
um, we have this, um, we had all of our students, they tend to use uh, the speed test tool that's available on the web. The problem with that tool is that it's not only measuring how fast your Wi-Fi is, but it's also measuring how fast your wired side and your ISP connection and the uplink all the way to the other end in the server somewhere on the internet. And so it's not giving you the real uh, reading of the performance of your wireless LAN per se. So I tend to prefer uh, this homegrown speed test that we have uh, because it's installed in our infrastructure. And uh, my support uh, personnel can actually use it. And uh, they're gonna, they're just gonna click. And I'm sorry, this is French, but <laughs> that's what you get for being the, in the only French-speaking province in Canada. It says performance test, and then you click debut, which means start. And then it's gonna give you uh, your IP, uplink, downlink, ping, jitter. You can submit the results, and that's how they send me the results of their test, saying, well, this user is complaining that the Wi-Fi is not super fast. It gives me a better perspective because it's only testing our own infrastructure. It's that's, as a matter of fact, it's testing our wired uh, infrastructure and that our data center. So basically, there shouldn't be something choking us in there. And so this is uh, testing the wireless plan as well because uh, the um, Wi-Fi perf node is is uh, connected to the campus SSID. So I, I really like this test. It's 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 really awesome. Uh, so I was talking about uh, Wi-Fi perf. One can also use that as a test tool. Uh, it's also very precise. I hope you guys can see it well. Uh, I tried to rec uh, record um, all these uh, just in case that um, something went wrong. Um, Tom, <laughs> you're the master of live presentations. I I am sorry. I'm a bit of a a nervous wreck uh, when it comes to presentation, so I didn't want to risk it. <laughs> no that's problem at I, all. That's why I recorded everything. And so this is a bit of a view of what I have on campus. I recorded this this morning. Wi-Fi Perf allows you to have a client on your um, your wireless device and run a server uh, in your infrastructure on the wired side. And it's gonna give you like the throughput that you get. You're gonna get uh, the bandwidth, uh, which SSID you're using, the RSSI, the number that I don't like. And you can see that this number, it looks as though since it's a negative, I'm assuming it's a D in dB instead of, of a ratio. You get the noise, you've got the data rate you're using, you've got your signal noise ratio. So this is a really awesome tool uh, for someone that wants to, to test um, more profoundly than our homegrown test for what's going on uh, in in their infrastructure. And you can go very far in those tests. I'm not gonna go too deep. I want this to be a 360. So uh, Wi-Fi Perf, awesome tool. It can be transferred, uh, it can be used on, uh, there are actually uh, mobile clients for iPerf. Uh, this is um, based on iPerf 3, by the way. If you look through the WLPC's uh, presentation, I think that Zaid has done an awesome thing of, of showing the uh, Wi-Fi perf, how he uses it, so you can refer to that. There's also, uh, I was talking about the Odroid. Last last year at WLPC, at uh, the conference, most of us uh, built an Odroid with uh, Jerry Ola's uh, instructions. That was awesome. That was a hands-on session. And uh, old droids are really not that expensive. So if you're looking for a way to add a portable sensor to your uh, to your arsenal of tools, I highly recommend that you look into that and using Wi-Fi Perf. I mean, those those things, a lot of uh, iPerf stuff, it's open source. So you know you can uh, you can spin them on on just a simple machine and uh, be on the ready for anything that can come your way. So among other, uh, all the data that you can uh, gather also, um, I mean, your infrastructure is gonna talk to you. So you might you might want like test tools like old droids and whatnot, but you know, if, if you're using uh, centralized or just even autonomous APs can give you a tremendous amount of information that's super interesting, that's gonna talk to you a lot about, about uh, how things are going. Among all that data, you can uh, 
You can uh, also look at retries. It's the percentage of frames that must be retransmitted. Re so don't forget that Wi-Fi is a simplex transmission. So, you know, only one person, I, I sometimes I, I compare it to a ball game. So there's only one person that's, that, that has the ball. And if you don't have the ball, you're, you're not allowed to talk. And when you pitch the ball, the person at the other end has to confirm that they have received it. So if you don't get that, then you get a retry. So, you know, once you've tried to throw that ball 10 times or 10% of the time without ever getting an acknowledgement, then, you know, you won't want to play anymore. And that's basically what happens, you know, with, with Wi-Fi. If you get more than 10% retries, uh, what's going to happen is that uh, your performance is going to be uh, severely degraded. I mean, TCP can be forgiving as a protocol, but for a data network, 10% retries, you're going to start feeling, you're going to start feeling the effects. If we're talking about uh, a voice network, if you get more than 2% retries, you're going to, your user are going to be after you with that, uh, uh, it, you know, so you're going to lose so many packets that you'll have no idea what I just said. If you're taking this read, these readings for your controller, um, don't forget one thing, though. Uh, this is the AP's per perspective, so you you might be better off uh, trying to to get uh, a reading from your clients, just to just to make sure that uh, you get the, the the client's perspective. Don't forget that the AP has better uh, tends to have better reception. It's more powerful. Has uh, it's more sensitive than your client, and and so, you know, that might come into play. So, going on, utilization. Uh, as I said, Wi-Fi is a simplex technology, and uh, there's only so, so much um, airtime that you can have. Now, um, rule of thumb is often that if you're above 70%, uh, you're gonna start to feel the heat. Uh, if uh, with with the, all the management and everything that that's gonna be added to that, there's not gonna be that many uh, occasions to transmit your packets. And so, you want to watch that utilization and keep it as slow as possible. Now, we're gonna come back to this a little bit later with tricks that you can have that you can use to uh, to bring your utilization down. It's something that you want to watch. I mean, you see that 81.05 here? That doesn't, that doesn't smell good. I mean, basically, it means that this AP, it can't talk on that network. It's just there, and it would be better off there. It, it would be better for our users to turn it off. Other things that you can watch, number of users per AP. A lot of people, when they come into Wi-Fi, they tend to uh, wonder, how many APs uh, should I have for that number of users? Well, you know, there's, it's not such an easy thing to measure. You're always better off like doing a proper survey and analysis and looking at what you really need and the type of clients that you're gonna have and how many active users and whatnot. But it can give you an, uh, um, the number of users per AP, the way I see it is, you know, if you've got 236 people on one AP, they're not getting that many chances of transmitting. I mean, just in sheer numbers. So to me, it's a clue that, hmm, you might, you might need to resize yourselves and reevaluate what your coverage is and, and how you've done it. Uh, now, you might want also to take a look at the distribution of users per band. I know there's a lot of people that tend to say that 2.4 is unusable and people should move away from it. Truth is, in EDU, uh, 2.4 is still widely used by a variety of, of devices. And moving to 5 gigahertz was very, uh, is, is not that evident because, I mean, the, the devices were so expensive and with the marketing stuff, allowing people to sell uh, devices as 802.11n, as 2.4 only devices, uh, this has really hurt us in a way. And so our students that don't have that much money, they're gonna bring in those laptops and we have them here for a couple of years. We wanna keep them, 
we love our students, so we want to keep them as long as we can, but we sure hope sometimes that th their devices wouldn't follow them that long. And so if I was to, uh, to um, create and design a new network, I would really have to consider the fact that, yes, I want to give them better service than five gigahertz, but uh, I, I do have to consider that 2.4 is still strong, so I still have to offer some, some, uh, some service in, in 2.4. Also, look at your most active users. What are they doing? Are they all together? Is it an application that you haven't thought of? It can clue you in as to what you really need to provide for your for, for them as a service. So you need to give them better speeds and whatnot. So that's one thing that you want to look at. Uh, coverage, average data rate per user. I like to look at it with uh, a tool that's made by Ekahau doing a site survey. This is a sample site survey that I did a while back of a site that I had issues with. So Ekahau, if you have active measurements uh, turned on as well as passive, it can give you an idea of the data rate that's, that's in use. Now it's an old site survey. You can see that it goes all the way up to 54 megabits per second. It's gonna break it down uh, further if, if you hover over uh, zones. You can see that the channel at one point was channel 11, signal uh, neg 672, SNR 11, which is very poor. Uh, it gives you uh, the modulation, gives you the data rate and whatnot. So <laughs> you can see that, you know, life, life was not so good for that user at that point. And so you wanna, you wanna look into that and make sure that you know, you can get your users on the network and off the air as soon as you can. Uh, you also want to look at the wired side. The wired side, uh, I mean, there's been a lot of discussion. People want to move to 802.11ac, and then we there are talks right now of 802.11ax, and um, super amazing speeds of uh, over a gig, and people talking about uh, giving dual gig ports to an AP and whatnot. But the truth of the matter is, oftentimes, even in my, in my busiest APs, I don't see the need for, uh, for dual gig ports. Uh, and so the way, I, the way we monitor things, we like to monitor a lot of those things uh, here. My analyst, he's, he loves his, this tool that's called CACT. Uh, and so we have graphs for every single um, port on campus that tells us, you know, how much data uh, is being sent in and out of a port. And that's how we see that, you know, whether or not we, we can justify that it's a gig port. So those are two just two random uh, AP ports that we have on our switches. It gives you an idea of what's going on on that AP. Is there a lot of traffic, what not? Do you need to consider something else? So. You can look at that, that's uh, very interesting. Another metric that we like to look at is the number of users that we get, total associations and whatnot uh, on our network. That's a thing that you can do with Cacti, it's an awesome tool, fairly easy to set up and uh, can give you uh, reports, it's, it's awesome. So, and you can use it for uh, Wi-Fi, you can use it for your wired, you can use it for a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, so I highly recommend it. It's going to give you a very good view of the wired side and even, as I said, sometimes a view of the Wi-Fi side. Reasons why we need all this information. Of course, you know, knowing what your clients are doing is, is going to allow you to design better uh, wireless plans. Uh, it's gonna, uh, all of this is going to allow you to make your network more secure because, uh, I mean, you're going to get a better control of, of your footprint and uh, how your, um, all your protocols are, are behaving. Having those metrics and, and, uh, and, and making sure that you follow closely on, on those markers uh, are gonna help you understand potential problems faster. It's gonna allow you to optimize your environment and, and keep era, mostly everything in tip-top shape. What's important to design? Well, you know, I. I was, I was thinking of what I saw in the CW, uh, CWDP book, and whenever I think of design and device mix, I think of uh, Andrew Von Nagy's um, blog, Revolution Wi-Fi. Andrew has this awesome tool that's called 
the capacity calculator or something like that. And so it's going to allow you to get to, to think about uh, your device mix. What's your uh, most important, least capable device? Uh, what do you want to accommodate? What kind of band? Uh, what kind of application? What kind of redundancy you want? Uh, what kind of client density you have? Uh, so, so metrics are very important for your for to to achieve your your uh, design goals. Of course, if it's an, a new uh, wireless LAN, metrics you're not going to have so far. But establishing a baseline is part of, I think, and I don't know if Tom you agree. Uh, it's it's somewhat the a part of the statement of work, the S O W. Don't you agree? Yeah, that's a good way to put it. So um, also, uh, and I was thinking here about the CWSP, things that are important for security, the round trip time, how long it takes to authenticate, uh, the retries, how efficient all your systems are. I was thinking, you know, in, in, if, if you think of the CWSP aspect, a lot of the metrics that you have that are available to you are going to speak tons about the health of uh, your security policies and whatnot. This is uh, something that you can see from, uh, from one of our uh, wireless LAN controllers. Uh, you can see that first request, uh, we had 20,000 on this particular um, access server. You can see the rejects are very high, so there might be something going on right there. Uh, we might be having some, some kind of a meltdown or something has went wrong. And so it's going to clue us in to maybe looking uh, at that server and see what is going on with it. Going back to CACTI, uh, this is a sample statistics that we have. It's, it's based on this uh, information, but directly from the CLI of the controller. And we're graphing it through a SNMP. Uh, so it's going to tell us uh, about the, the retries, the accepts, the challenges, the rejects, and whatnot. Give us a clue as to what's going on. We use CACTI a lot in the meltdown that we had recently uh, to give us an idea of what was going on and how many requests. You can uh, you can uh, also graph the stuff that comes from your radius server, so radius drops and whatnot. You can graph them. And so uh, we had a recent meltdown of our uh, radius servers. CACTI came uh, came in handy uh, as to uh, as to understanding uh, what happened uh, with that meltdown. It helped us uh, get a starting point to troubleshooting that issue. Thinking of CWAP, there is this uh, there is this phrase that <laughs> most of you have heard before: a peak cap or it didn't happen. Things that are going to matter for your Wi-Fi. Um, uh, if you have a lot of of uh, protection mechanism uh, packets that are being exchanged. This is putting a, an overhead on your uh, wireless LAN network. So, you know, uh, getting a, a wireless trace, you can uh, you can easily filter on type. So type 11 and 12 are CTS and RTS. And then if you select only those uh, only those types of, of packets, you can see that out of, uh, you can see that at the very bottom of my screen right now. So out of almost 30,000 packets, 16% were either a CTS or RTS. So we might have all devices that we can get rid of. If we do that, then maybe everything else will stop using those protection mechanisms and we can get a little bit more juice out of, uh, of that network and get it uh, perform to perform a little better. So uh, there are a lot of tenants of uh, good wireless LAN administration. So, you know, there's this famous Stephen Covey habit, begin with the end in mind. So good tenets of, of wireless land administration often begin with designing according to desired capacity and performance. So uh, sell, uh, size your cell adequately, limit your number of SIDs. Once again, Andrew has an awesome tool about that that shows you the overhead that's generated by, by having multiple SSIDs. Usually we like to see three or less SSIDs to make sure that we don't have too many beacons that are sent, that's always sent at the lowest uh, rate possible. So, uh, you know, this is going to take airtime. And so you want to move your, your people on and off the network as fast as you can. So if you've got this very slow beacon coming in every 102 milliseconds, the more you have of them, the less you're going to be able to move your people faster. And we want to, think, to have things moving faster. So to conclude, 
uh, real life scenario. So um, here's here's um, the place where I'd like to hear you guys talk. I'm gonna give you a little bit of data, and I'm gonna uh, I'd like to hear your input about what I'm what I'm gonna show you. So, say you've got a network of 20 20,000 uh, sim users of P, about 2,000 APs. This is about an AP square uh, per per 5,000 square feet. I don't like using APs by by square feet. It's not it's not a good measurement. Uh, I hate doing that, but you know there are there are still certain densities that we're using it we're used to see. So in the EDU space, um, we tend to see more like one AP per 2,000 3,000 square feet. And so this this thing is a deployment where you have one AP by 5,000 square feet. Uh, it has three SSIDs, and the design has seen uh, minor updates, but initially it was surveyed for 802.11g uh, using APOS, and initially it was not uh, deployed thinking of 5 gigahertz, it was a 2.4 network only. And so, back then, the design was done for a blanket coverage. So what are you going to do with these, that, uh, these inputs, these sample measurements? For a sample AP, average AP, your channel utilization can go all the way up to 81% of the time for the channel. Your average throughput is going to be 492 kilobits uh, per second per user. So this is an average. Now uh, you have about maybe tops 200 a the people on an AP. That's a huge number, by the way. Excuse my French, literally. So the um, uh, RSSI, uh, the average RSSI, 75% uh, of your APs have uh, an, an RSSI. No, excuse me. 75% of your clients have an RSSI over 67 dB, and 25% are below 67. Now, the number 67, I remind you, it's in dB. The um, average wireless phone needs next 67 uh, and uh, uh, SNR of 20 to 25 in order to work properly. So this guy, uh, average RSSI, I hate that number, but anyways, that's the one I have, is 75% are worse than uh, next 67. And so SNR is, as I said, we like to see it around 25 to get MCS rates that are decent. So 49% of, of people have SNR of 25 or better. That means that they get N rates. 51% have something between 1 and 24 uh, SNR. That's not very good. So uh, I'd, I'd like to hear what your recommendation is. Uh, I'm going to read through the chat. Uh, to me, uh, this scenario calls for a redesign, but that's my own opinion. I think that uh, all those markers uh, show that uh, smaller cells and and um, better client distribution and consideration for uh, five gigahertz uh, should be in order. And so um, I'm leaving this open for discussion. In conclusion, um, the Wi-Fi lifecycle depends on your use of matrix, so there's a ton of information that you can use. Uh, reports are in your, at your fingertips. Uh, all through this presentation, I've, uh, I didn't mention it, but I used a lot uh, of the metrics that I get, the reports that I get from my uh, WIDS, WIPS, which I will not name, but it's, it's a vendor's tool. Uh, there's, uh, there are awesome tools that are uh, open source out there. I'll let you find them out. But in the end, you're in charge of this network, so you know it's your data is there. It's you have to let the data whisper to you the answer, and and then you know the the rewards are going to be great. So I hope that you guys had fun. I'm looking forward to your uh, questions um, and your conclusions uh, to the example I've given I've given you. And before I leave it to Tom and to your questions, I'd like to thank uh, my mentors, my friends, my folks that inspire me every day, uh, Devin, uh, Andrew, Key, uh, and all their work. Uh, thanks, Tom, for having me.
and my my pals Glenn Kate and Sam Clements for their help. You can uh, you can find them out on the web. They are awesome presentations uh, and websites about metrics. VP Conan, uh, Rick Murphy, Jim Geyer, and, and Daryl DeRosha have done awesome stuff. Uh, Daryl is passionate about metrics. He's going to get in much more details than I had the chance of of, of getting today. I hope that this uh, this presentation has uh, teased you so that uh, just enough so that you learn a bit more about metrics. And uh, I invite you to join us on Twitter. Uh, there are awesome forums on cwnp.com. There's a Twitter chat every now and then. And then we have an awesome uh, Slack group for wireless LAN professional, wifipro.slack.com. So you're uh, invited to join in and participate. Uh, the participation of everyone is what makes the Wi-Fi community awesome. So thank you. Excellent. Thanks, May. Good information. Um, you know, a lot of very useful, not just facts, but showing us some of the tools I think will be helpful to a lot of people and give them some ideas for some of the things they might want to look for for measuring their environment. I know a lot of people that watch our webinars are not necessarily full-time wireless LAN administrators, and they may be placed in a situation where they have to administer the network plus a couple hundred access points and they just kind of also have to do that. So knowing what is available to them to improve their support is very, very important because the reality is they're very time constrained.